Welcome to the 113th commencement. We will begin our ceremony in roughly five minutes. During the processional, ceremony, and recessional, we ask that you keep the aisles completely clear at all times for safety purposes and that you do not cross the stanchions in the middle of the aisles. You are welcome to come to the stanchion to take a picture of your graduate as they cross the stage. We offer a sincere thank you in advance for sitting in your reserved seats since we are expecting a completely full house today. I now invite your attention to the screen to watch the graduates complete a tradition here at Tabor College. Four years ago, most of the graduates participated in an event called The Ascent. In case you do not know, Tabor was named after Mount Tabor in present-day Israel. The Ascent and Mount Tabor are connected. Tabor was named in honor of this event recorded in Scripture. Hear part of the story from Mark 9, verses 2 and 3. And after six days, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and led them up a high mountain by themselves. And he was transfigured before them and his clothes became radiant, intensely white, as no one on earth could bleach them. After the tragic fire of 1918, in which the sole building burned to the ground, construction on a new structure started immediately. In fact, two buildings were constructed. Opening on April 30, 1920, the Lorenz Building has been in continuous use ever since. The Transfiguration Passage is a central feature of this building, serving as an architectural reminder of biblical history. The steps ascending represent going up the mountain, past the Greek columns of knowledge. It was the desire that all students would walk up the steps through the columns of knowledge into the halls of learning to be transformed by the Holy Spirit through a decidedly Christian curriculum and faculty. Four years ago, a new freshman class was commissioned for the next step in their journey, cheered on by their peers, faculty, and staff as they walked together from the Centennial Plaza up the Lorenz Steps and into the chapel. Now ready to graduate, they reverse course and make their way from the Lorenz Chapel down those steps past the same columns having been challenged in their faith, wrestled with complex problems, mastered skills essential for vocational success, and learned to live in community. They will pass the Centennial Plaza one last time before entering the Rickard Auditorium. A few facts about our graduating class. They come from five countries, from Finland in the north to Colombia in the south and as far as Indonesia to the east and a good number from across the pond in the UK. We also have students from 11 states one each from Nebraska, Idaho, and Illinois, three from Nevada and Arizona, four from Colorado, five Oklahoma, 11 California, 13 from Texas, and 36 from right here in Kansas. While not a definitive list, here's what's next for many of our graduates. Three are off to medical school. One is starting a business right here in the Hillsborough community. Six have accepted K-12 teaching positions, two of which are international appointments. Two have accepted ministry assignments. Eight are going into industry, Chick-fil-A Corporate, Kansas Big Brothers Big Sisters, Coke Industries, and Swindle Jansen Hawk and Lloyd. And 19 are heading off to graduate school, 15 of whom are continuing on in the program right here at Tabor. We pray that they in fact have been transformed through their learning and interactions with faculty, staff, and peers. Even more, we pray that they leave more certain in their faith, whether new to it or a Christ follower of many years. We thank you for sharing your student with us for this season. We send them from this commencement exercise into the world, equipped to make it more like Christ wanted it to be.
Good morning, everybody. Um, I'm going to be leading us in prayer, so if you guys would join me by bowing your heads. Dear Lord, thanks for bringing us all here today and uh, bringing our friends and family here safe, um, for allowing each and every one of us here to share this experience in this room. Um, I want to express the gratitude that we have from all of us. I believe that you have carried us graduates this far. Lord, I can only ask that wherever you plan to take us in life, may it align with the studies that we have completed but more importantly, that it aligns with your will in our lives. As we go on in life, help us to latch on to you more as you're the one that carries us. It's not our titles, it's not our degrees, it's you. And thank you for giving us the keys to open many doors of success. Lord, I wanna recognize your power in this and pray that Nothing but joy is expressed here over this next hour. And I pray that our safety is in your hands and we be under your protection as we gather and celebrate this milestone in our lives. Thank you once again for all who are here. Thank you for everyone who helped set this up. Thank you for all of the experiences, the cries, the laughs, the smiles, the wins, the losses and the people that you placed in our life that helped us get through those experiences. It's in your name I pray, amen. amen. If you guys remain standing while President Jansen approaches. Thank you, Jaron. You may be seated. Welcome. Welcome to the 113th commencement of Tabor College. Today is a day to celebrate. To our graduates, today is one of those few memorable days in your life that marks a significant moment of change. You walked in as students, you will walk out as graduates with a new degree. A college degree represents many things, not least of which is that you can focus on something difficult and complete it. And you have done just that. Today we recognize your hard work and perseverance. We all know that you didn't arrive at this point on your own. Many of the people who helped you along the way are here with us. To all the classmates, faculty, family, and friends, we say welcome and thank you. Whether online or in person, thank you for being part of this day. We celebrate graduation in a formal way at Tabor, with pomp and circumstance, with order and with praise to God for his goodness. You have made your plans, but I believe that God directed your steps to this day. So here we go. Let's mark the moment and begin the celebration. Each year, the graduating class chooses two students to speak to you on their behalf. They are not chosen on the basis of their academic achievements, though they are strong, or on the basis of certain activities or awards. Rather, they are chosen for the everyday leadership and example that they have provided their classes as they have earned their degrees. Representing Tabor College graduate programs this year is Seth Hilton, receiving his Master's of Business Administration with an emphasis on sports in sports management and leadership. Following his speech, the Tabor College Concert Choir, directed by Dr. Greg Zilke, will perform a number entitled, I Will Sing. Seth, please come forward. There he is, Seth. I got told to adjust this. It's really important that you can hear me. Okay. Uh, it's always uh, an honor to be able to speak in front of people and uh, at this event. And I'm going to go ahead and do some thank yous. And with that, I won't be able to get everybody 
Uh, but here we go. <laughs> so I just want to thank Dr. Melinda Rangel. I want to thank you for contacting me about the opportunity to speak today. And I have so many capable course mates, so I'm humbled and consider receiving your invitation to speak and honor. I want to thank my professors. Thank you for the hard work you've put in to ensure that the education we receive at Tabor College is of the highest caliber. I want to thank Ms. Lynette Barsh uh, for always keeping the graduate students up to date on information we need. And I know uh, that she puts a lot of work in that. And I would also like to give her a shout out for pressing the caps and gowns and hoods of the graduate students who traveled from out of town. She's actually in a different room right now watching our stuff to make sure no one steals it. <laughs> so thank you. I also want to thank Miss Becky Nuss. Thank you for always having our books organized and ready to go so we can have everything that we need for our classes. Um, every, to everyone that I mentioned and anyone that I might have missed, I just want to thank you for always uh, putting a lot of time and dedication into the graduate program, uh, and it does not go unnoticed. I'm very thankful for all of you and would not have the opportunities I do now without you. Uh, I want to thank my, uh, my family and anybody else in the audience. Uh, all the other friends and family that are here, thank you for being here today to celebrate these graduates uh, and our accomplishments. We appreciate your presence and we are so glad that you're here. I'd also like to shout out my wife, Tori. Thank you for being wonderful, a wonderful support system and always being here there for me when I felt like I could not continue. Um, as Dr. Johnson said, my name is Seth Hilton. I'm originally from the Missouri area near Springfield. Uh, I attended College of the Ozarks in Branson, Missouri to complete my undergraduate degree in physical education, grades K through 12 with a minor in coaching. Upon earning my degree, I started looking uh, for graduate assistant positions because I knew I wanted to earn my master's degree. Uh, so I was contacted by Coach Reed, the women's basketball coach here at Tabor. And I applied for graduate school, was accepted, and had the honor to serve as the women's basketball graduate assistant for the past two years. In 2021, my then fiance and I graduated from college in May, got married in June, moved to Kansas in July, and I started classes in August. That was the longest yet fastest summer of my life. I consider the MBA program here second to none. Our professors work extremely hard to appropriately, appropriately push us to our limits uh, to ensure that we succeed in anything we do. I believe they have prepared us well for success. Our professors are firm yet loving. During my two years, every professor I have had is always willing to help mitigate any confusion or other issues hindering our assignment requirements. I would recommend Tabor's graduate program to anyone looking to further their education. Personally, I want to earn my graduate degree, but I knew returning to school would be extremely hard if I didn't do it immediately after earning my undergrad. Looking back, I have no regrets and I would do it all over again. Because of the opportunities the MBA program here at Tabor has provided, I will move back to Missouri soon. And by soon, I mean I'm supposed to be in Newton at three to pick up the U-Haul, so. We'll be booking it over there. Uh, I have been given the opportunity to teach and coach at a high school in the area I grew up in, and I will be able to be a part of developing the next generation of leaders and instilling the values Tabor College has taught me over these two years. Thank you.
Philippians 4, verses 1, 4 through 9. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, you whom I love and long for, my joy and my crown, stand firm in the Lord in this way, dear friends. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. 
by the Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, in prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is lovely, whatever is pure, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put into practice, and the God of peace will be with you. It is my pleasure to introduce this year's commencement speaker. When I asked a group of graduating students their opinions, Dr. Aline Ratzliff's name quickly emerged as a beloved professor who teaches well, models excellence, and demonstrates genuine love and care for her students. Dr. Aline Ratzliff graduated from Tabor College with a bachelor's degree in social work in the 70s. She lived and ministered in Northeast Wichita with World Impact for 17 years, where she was involved in community ministry with children, teenagers, and adults. In the mid-90s, she sensed God's call to leave World Impact and attend graduate school with the goal of learning how to help others tell their stories. After completing a master's in communication at Wichita State University, she accepted a teaching position in communications here at Tabor. Eileen took a study leave from Tabor in 1996 to earn her doctorate at the University of Florida. She returned to Tabor in the fall of 2000 as an assistant professor of communication. Using archival primary sources and oral histories, her main research focus is the black press and its role in community building, particularly during the late 19th and early 20th centuries. She is an active member of American Journalism Historians Associations and the Association of Educators in Journalism and Mass Communication. Her publications include Black Press Pioneers in Kansas and chapters in Seeking a Voice, Images of Race and Gender in the 19th Century. Her passion is learning about and experiencing other cultures. At Tabor, she was the advisor for the Multicultural Student Union for nearly a decade. She has led multiple travel study groups to Southeast Asia with Dr. Frank Brenneman. Now retired, she continues to teach communication courses at Tabor, including Intro to Communication and Intercultural Communication. Please join me in welcoming Professor Emerita, Dr. Aline Ratzliff. Good, good morning. Make sure that I'm coming through okay, Chris? Good, all right. In March, I received an email from President Jansen. He wanted me to come meet with him the following week, either in my office or his. I didn't know what he wanted to talk with me about, and I even wondered, should I be a little bit concerned about the meeting? But he warmly welcomed me into his office and then caught me by surprise by inviting me to deliver this year's commencement address. So know that I view it as a high honor to be asked to speak to you today, this year's graduates. To your family, friends, and guests, as well as Tabor's faculty, staff, administrators, and students who are here. A couple of weeks ago, Tyrell Haynes, whom I've known since he was a freshman, told me there's a rumor on campus that my speech will be only five minutes this morning. <laughs> that was based on the speed which I run through PowerPoints in my class <laughs> and how often I am asked to go back to the previous slide for those who are taking notes. Well, if you've had class with me, you know that happens rather frequently. 
but today you can breathe a sigh of relief. There's no PowerPoint, and you certainly aren't expected to take notes today. So congratulations to you, the graduating classes of, I need to get this out of the way. That's, thank you. This guy comes to the rescue a lot. Get it down. I've got a mic, I've got a mic on. We had mic checks this morning at 8.30. Chris very specifically told me to lower the speaker, the microphone. Eh, oh well. <laughs> All right, this is a significant day in the transition of your life, you graduates. It marks both an ending and a beginning. It carries warm memories of the past and invites dreams for the future. It can also bring pause. Your time at Tabor has included rewards and successes on the field, in the classroom, and on the stage. But it also has included struggles, disappointments, injuries, even tragedies and COVID. Yes, we all encounter opportunities and challenges in our life journey. And I think I'm being realistic today about how memorable this speech will be for you. I graduated from Tabor College about 40 years ago. You know what? I don't remember who the commencement speaker was, let alone what was said. But my hope today is that there might be a word or a phrase that can encourage you or inspire you just for today. So what's my title about? Embracing the Vitamin C's of Life. I think the title captures the message I want to impart to you. The main points are three words that begin with the letter C. Yes, there are a myriad of good C words from which to choose, but the three that I'm going to focus on today are connection, communication, and change. I think vitamins are a good analogy for these words. Vitamins are vital for ongoing growth. Our physical bodies need vitamin C, in fact, to form blood vessels muscle and collagen and bones and it's also essential to our body's healing process so like vitamins i believe that taking connection communication and change to heart is vital as you graduate and make contributions to this world the c i'll begin with is connection by connection, I'm referring to the sense of closeness and belongingness a person can experience when having supportive relationships with others. Connection is when two or more people interact with each other, and each person feels valued, seen, and heard. With your experiences here at Tabor, you may have established some strong relationships with your peers and classmates, coaches, professors, and staff. You know, strong connections keep us grounded, whether here at Tabor or elsewhere. Research has found that people who engage in meaningful and productive activities with others tend to live longer, improve their moods, and have a stronger sense of purpose. So it's important for you to be socially and emotionally connected to family, friends, and neighbors, even as you go your separate ways. Build a sense of belonging by cultivating connections where you are and where you've been. I encourage you to maintain key connections with friends, professors, and coaches at Tabor wherever you go physically. Shasta Nelson is an author who's written about the value of close friendships. 
She argues that those relationships are often marked by three factors, consistent interaction and time together, vulnerable sharing, which includes knowing what's going on in each other's lives, and positive feelings that reinforce closeness. Why is it so critical to have those lifelong relationships? Well, Nelson noted that a study at the University of Texas said it requires over 200 hours of being together before you describe someone as a best or close friend. Nelson says this kind of intimacy would take us forever to restart every time we move. So I encourage you to view important relationships you've had here at Tabor and choose a few at least to continue to invest in. Figure out how to stay in touch in short, small ways such as texting and social media and prior prioritize seeing each other in person at least once a year. <clears throat> the second C is communication. Those of you who know me shouldn't be surprised that that communication is on the list. In my class, I typically begin with a definition of communication. It's the management of messages for the purpose of creating shared meaning. It's about connecting with others. According to Mark Fruciano, a well-known presentation skills coach, being a competent, effective communicator is the highest on the list of soft skills. It's competent communication that facilitates and builds connections with others. The mission statement of our communication program is to prepare students to be effective communicators in settings of life, work, and service for Christ and his kingdom. I've taught a lot of public speaking classes, and I'm the first to emphasize how important presentation skills are. But you know what? The communication skill I want to emphasize this morning, I want to challenge you to work on becoming a better listener. Research indicates that 45% of communication goes to listening, 30% to speaking, 16% to reading, and 9% to writing. This means that almost half of the time spent communicating is doing listening. Listening is key to all effective communication. As a result, communication will break down and interactions will be easily developed. Irritations will be there, we'll have conflicts when we aren't good listeners. Active listening enhances your ability to understand others and strengthens relationships, whether family, friends, or coworkers. It involves going beyond hearing the words that another person speaks, but also seeking to understand the meaning and intent behind those words. It requires being an active participant in the communication process. Active listening techniques include being fully present in the conversation, listening to understand rather than to respond, asking open-ended questions to encourage further responses, and importantly, withholding judgment and advice. If there's one communication still you should master quite well, it is undoubtedly listening. It takes intentionality and lots of practice, so I challenge you to become better at listening. The final word I want to talk about is change. People respond differently to the prospect of change. How do you feel about it? Does it excite you? Does it cause angst? Well, ready or not, each of you will encounter change after today as you begin the next chapter in your life journey. Personality types, cultural values, and past experiences can affect how you view change. In intercultural communication, we talk about the idea of uncertainty avoidance. Some cultures are characterized by high uncertainty avoidance, where standards are strict, predictability is critical, and risks are viewed with caution. The goal is to avoid or mitigate those uncertain times. Contrary, in low uncertainty avoidance cultures, people are comfortable with unpredictable situations. They require few rules and lean more toward guidelines 
rather than providing structure with rigid do's and don'ts. So it is with individuals. Some prefer to stay with what's familiar. They are long-term planners and like consistency being with those they know. They dislike having to adjust quickly to unexpected changes. It's been said, it's hardest to change when you're comfortable. Others welcome change and appreciate trying something new or becoming acquainted with different people. For them, change opens opportunities for improvement and variety. Routines can leave them unmotivated. Typically, they tend to be more flexible and calmer during those times of uncertainty. In this audience today, I expect there are those of you that find yourself at either end of the continuum, maybe somewhere in between. The other day, one of the graduates sitting here this morning shared with me that not having a job nailed down is causing anxiety about the future and distracting him from enjoying the present. Over the years, I've learned that change means living with some uncertainty. It may mean taking risks. Share how you're feeling with others and with God. In retrospect, those times can become rewarding, especially with the opportunity to trust God and wait for the answers. I'm going to close this morning with a story about a connection I made 50 years ago. Whoops, 30 years ago. I don't know how many of you were doing the math. Oh, well. I want to share about the communic uh, communication we shared and the lesson she taught me about trust and embracing change. After I graduated from Tabor, I agreed to spend the summer teaching Bible clubs for children and teens in Northeast Wichita with World Impact. After that summer, I felt God's tug for me to stay on. While there, and especially in the first couple of months, I learned to know a woman in the community named Sue Ella Orange. She was in her early 60s. Everyone called her T, which was short for auntie. T grew up in Greensburg, Mississippi, and worked in the cotton fields as a child and teenager. In her early 20s, she gave birth to a child, Ernestine, who had multiple disabilities. She and her daughter eventually moved to Wichita. They were going to be close to T's extended family. T sacrificially cared for her 40-year-old daughter. Ernestine was both blind and hearing impaired. She suffered from seizures and couldn't walk. T would feel, feed her daily. She would lift Ernestine from her bed into the tub to give her a bath and Ernestine would often fret, and that would cause T concern. She and I met weekly for Bible studies. You know what? Our connection started by watching the young and the restless. <laughs> Honest. That soap opera is celebrating its 50th anniversary this year, but it's the way that our connection began. T and I would read several verses and talk about them. She only had a third grade reading level, so five or six verses was plenty for the morning. Over the years, though, we worked our way through multiple books in the New Testament. I remember Mark, Luke, and Philippians. And so that lets you know why I chose that scripture passage today. That was her favorite. I asked her once if she had ever memorized a Bible verse. She said she hadn't, but she wanted to memorize Philippians 4. Six. We learned it together. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God your needs, and don't forget to thank him for his answers. T lived those verses. Every time we met and prayed together, she would ask God to send someone who could give Ernestine a ride so that that would calm her restlessness. T believed that telling God her needs then God would meet those needs. How often she would say to me, God doesn't necessarily give you what you want, but he always gives you what you need, and God did. A couple learned about T's needs and committed themselves to giving weekly 30-minute rides to Ernestine and T. So I think those verses in Philippians carry important messages and reminders for each of us, and especially you graduates for 20 23. 
So I'm just going to read a couple verses to remind you. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Don't be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Blessings to you. Congratulations. Ladies and gentlemen, we are about to confer the degrees on our graduates. Before doing so, I want to thank our junior marshals for their service this morning and for their distinguished academic accomplishments. You can read about them on page two of the program. Also, at your convenience, I invite you to read the section explaining the significance of our regalia located at the end of your program. Our robes and hoods are rich in symbolism and tradition. There will be a ceremonial conferral of all degrees by our president with the candidates standing together. The recipients of each degree will then come forward by rows to receive their diploma from President Jensen, assisted by Registrar, Registrar Scott Franz, Professor Derek Hamm, chair of the faculty, will present gold honor cords to those graduating with honors. President Jensen will present blue honor cords to those undergraduates who are graduating from the Presidential Leadership Program. So now I invite the candidates for the degrees Master of Business Administration, Master of Education, Bachelor of Arts, Bachelor of Science, and Bachelor of Social Work to rise. You, no, you rise. You, <laughs> Give us a moment. We're going to be okay. Yep, just go back to your seat. Yep. Yep. There we go, Mr. President. Mr. President, these candidates have met all the requirements for graduation for the respective degrees as prescribed by the faculty and the board of directors of Tabor College. I therefore recommend that they be awarded their degrees. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Directors and upon the recommendation of the faculty of Tabor College, it is my privilege to confer upon you the degrees which you have earned with all the rights and responsibilities pertaining thereto. Congratulations. You may be seated. Will the candidates for the degree of Master of Business Administration please come forward? Dr. Melinda Rangel, Director of the MBA Corps and Leadership Emphasis, will be assisted by Professor Amy Ratzliff, Director of the MBA Sports Management and Leadership Emphasis, in hooding the candidates, which is the traditional sign of their degree. Leonardo Aguilar, honors. Leslie Noah Brown IV, honors. Montel Tony Stewart. Spencer Kenneth Hemmert. Sarah. 
Sammy Joe Peterson, honors. Trajan Smith. <laughs> Alexia Nusi Klepp Souza. High honors. Seth Ethan Hilton, honors. <laughs> Will the candidates for the degree of Master of Education please come forward? Dr. David Stevens, Program Director of the Master of Education Program and Associate Professor of Education, will be assisted by Dr. Melinda Rangel in hooding the candidates, which is the traditional sign of their degree. Shondell Monique Clausen, high honors. Jose A. Licon, high honors. <laughs> Gunnar Reese, honors. Lindsay Rader. <laughs> Danny Frick, high honors. <laughs> Kelly Tyson, high honors. Arlene Brown, high honors. <laughs> Lindsay Hincher, high honors. Katie Epima, high honors. <laughs> Amethyst Ada Mary Flores, honors. Will the candidates for the degrees Bachelor of Arts, Bachelor of Science, and Bachelor of Social Work please come forward?
And in this uh, instance, let's hold our applause until we get a row through, and that'll help us keep things moving. We'll do our best to manage the traffic so everyone can see. James D. Lang the Fourth. Marcus A. Miller. Carter Mayer. Franklin D. Miller. Gustavo Villarreal the third. Martavian Jackson. Wyatt D. Lepke. Brooks Ryan Gardner. Caden Everett. Cody Moore. Gavin Bloom. Nick Patrick. Hunter Dudley. Jacqueline Garcia Garcia. While we're waiting, let's recognize these graduates with our applause. <laughs> Megan Brock. <laughs> Callie Cathcart, summa cum laude. Darian Ratsliff, summa cum laude. Rory Cameron. Jonathan O. Davis. Devin Michael Reed. Ryan Peden, cum laude. <laughs> Bethany Yutsi, summa cum laude. <laughs> Noah Spicer, summa cum laude, Presidential Leadership Fellow. Josiah Benjamin Jost. <laughs> Caleb Cleaver, summa cum laude. <laughs> Haley O'Neill, summa cum laude. Reagan Hess, summa cum laude, Presidential Leadership Fellow. Woo! 
Jasmine Sandoval, cum laude. Natalie Ford, summa cum laude, Presidential Leadership Fellow. <laughs> Emma Elizabeth Wilson, summa cum laude. <laughs> Kiera Brooke Shuey, summa cum laude. Mallory Grace Ediger, cum laude. Mildred Elizabeth Sechrist, summa cum laude. Pierce Allen Clausen, summa cum laude, Presidential Leadership Scholar. Jonathan Wyatt Unruh, magna cum laude, Presidential Leadership Fellow. <laughs> Caleb John Rimple, magna cum laude, Presidential Leadership Scholar. <laughs> Kobe A. Villegas, cum laude. Jewel Norris, summa cum laude. Let's recognize these graduates with our applause. Bailey Dennett. <laughs> Tara Sheets, summa cum laude, Presidential Leadership Scholar. <laughs> Shay Sutherland, summa cum laude, Presidential Leadership Scholar. Paisley Hager. <laughs> Brynelise Nelson, summa cum laude. Lauren Paredes. Marissa Viejo, magna cum laude. <laughs> Carrington Applebach. <laughs> Victoria Ray Gonzalez, magna cum laude. Valdiza Andov, cum laude. Robert Eisenhower, magna cum laude.
Demarcus M. Fisher. David Zachary Caleb Moss, magna cum laude. Cedric Armstrong. Adam Nance, cum laude. Katerita Kaikinen, magna cum laude. Sarah Yutsi, summa cum laude. Olivia Christine Shank, summa cum laude, Presidential Leadership Fellow. Brianna Habel. Emma May Molm. Lainey Marie Scott, magna cum laude. Hannah Jones. Mateo Garcia. John Paul Fort. Mikkel Alexander. Zach Johnson, summa cum laude. Alfredo Vincente Enriquez. Brittany Baum, summa cum laude. Tyrell Haynes. Betsy George. Vane Ortega. Cyrus Chikaziri Akara. Patricia Beth Everett, summa cum laude. Cayman Garduno. And Jerron Usher. Let's recognize these graduates with our applause.
This next step is very important, so we want to wait and make sure they're all in here. Thanks for your patience. <coughs> Graduates, you did not arrive at this point on your own. You had many people supporting you through the last 20 plus years of your life. Many of those people have joined you here today, either in person or online. We want to take a moment to honor those who have supported you and sacrificed for you and loved you through this moment. If you are a parent, spouse, guardian, grandparent, aunt, uncle, sibling, or cousin of one of our graduates today, would you please stand? Thank you. We recognize you and your effort. Would all of the undergraduates, including Bachelor of Arts, Bachelor of Science, and Bachelor of Social Work graduates today please stand? All of the undergraduates. At this point, you may now move your tassels. With our applause, we recognize you, the class of 2023, and our graduates. You may be seated. It is my pleasure now to welcome Natalie Ford to the podium to give the undergraduate student address. Again, my name is Natalie Ford, and I had the pleasure of serving as the senior class president this past year. Tabor, over the past four years, has become a place where we sleep, eat, compete, learn, play, and worship, and so much more, making it our home away from home. When we came to Tabor, we did not understand the impact that it would have on us, our lifelong friendships, and that it would bring us closer as brothers and sisters in Christ. As the graduating class of 2023, we have been through a lot together, and we have persevered to sit in these seats today. With that being said, we did not do it alone, and we had many people and experiences that were keys to our success. For instance, in our freshman year, COVID prevented us from having a typical college experience, not only for that year, but the majority of our sophomore year as well. We faced lockdowns, online classes, Zoom meetings, masks, many, many quarantines, but we came out stronger for the experience. We are now prepared to face the world because we already have. We learned how to adapt in the midst of crisis. Our key to success here was the willingness of the Tabor administration, the professors, the coaches, not giving up, but to create a new environment for learning and for community. Their goal was to get us back in the classroom on campus as quickly as possible, and they succeeded. In the classroom, we were all connected, but not only with each other, but with our professors. Tabor is special. Because instead of being a number lost in the crowd, we are known by name. And as our professors help us grow, we grow not only academically, but as men and women each year. My key to success was a professor who took a chance on me as a freshman. She taught me valuable business skills, but also became a mentor, sharing her wisdom about life. God knows exactly who to put in our lives and when they need to be placed beside us. Since then, we have worked together in our faith journey, gone on trips, had fun together, planned many events, laughed, cried, and brought home some deck of trophies. I look back on the past four years and have nothing but gratitude. Without these professors and people like them, we would not only fail academically, but we would fail as we enter the world trying to tear us down. If you see a professor today or get a chance to tell them thank you for everything they have done, please do so. Our next key to success I would like to highlight today is the community at Tabor. This includes each and every one of us in this room. We all helped each other either in small or big ways over the past four years. For some, it was a community that valued academic success and held study groups. For others, it was provided opportunities to get involved in sports teams, clubs, 
service projects, and so much more. For all of us, it was a place to learn about God and worship him in a different way than we ever have before. We did this through chapels and SP and D, which are our shared prayer and dare program. For me, it was a community that taught me how to have fun and live in the moment. This was a large part due to my best friends, dragging me away from whatever test I was studying for. Little experiences made it special, like playing Uno for hours in the Schlicht, dyeing hair in dorm rooms, or taking many trips to Wichita for Chipotle. We made our own fun in this small community, and we got involved building relationships that will last us a lifetime. This is a community that cares about each individual that makes up the Lord's kingdom. Thus, I ask you to look to your left and to your right, telling those who made the community special, thank you. All of these keys to success would not be possible without Tabor's culture being centered on a foundation of faith. Every accomplishment and every opportunity we have today is because of our great God. He, was ble he blessed us with each key to success, opening door after door. Now we stand before the greatest door of all because, we because of all the keys that Tabor has provided. We now hold a new key, the key to our future. Under your seats are skeleton keys with a little blue ribbon on them. Each one is different, signi signifying our transition from being the one given to the key to being the one holding the key. Matthew 16, 9 says, I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you do, bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatever you lose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. We are now equipped, thanks to Tabor and the community and the people in it, to pursue our futures. With the ultimate key in hand and the ability to glorify God. As we go through today, think about who you need to thank for helping you become a college graduate. Thank, your t thank you to Tabor, our professors, our coaches, our friends, our family, and so many others for being our keys to success. And I just want to say congratulations, class of 2023. Great job. Thank you, Natalie. We'd like to remind you to stay in your seats until the recessional is complete. Once the graduates have exit, exited the auditorium and taken the traditional walk through the line of faculty, you are dismissed to greet your graduates. Our graduates will meet their family and friends on the Cleaver Plaza, just outside the main doors of the Fine Arts Center. We want to thank you all for joining us today to celebrate the class of 2023 and to give our Heavenly Father all the honor and all the glory. The band and the choir would love to lead you in the singing of the Tabor hymn, Redeemed of God. Would you stand?
pray with me. Father, we thank you for your goodness and for the ev evidence of this goodness in the work you've done in the lives of these graduates. We ask that you continue to walk with them as they transition into the next steps in their lives and continue your work in them. To the graduating class of 2023, may God's blessing rest on each of you. May hope carry you through the challenging times and to be thankful in all things. May God grant you deep and meaningful relationships, relationships that can both support and challenge you. May God bless you with a profound concern for others and that this concern would lead you to act for those in need in order to continue the good work of justice, equality, and peace. May God bless you with the foolishness to think that you can make a difference in this world so that you will do the things which others tell you that you cannot. And finally, may the reflection of Christ on your life be a gift to the world, and may the Spirit of God be with you always. Amen. Thank you. 